Well, um, hey up and uh, good morning. And it is a good morning because um, we're in the Peak District and I've come to Snake Woodland, somewhere where I've been before. And last time I was here, I made a video about focus stacking. And I felt then that I wasn't really focusing on the woodland itself. I was focusing more on the technicalities of focus stacking. And I always said it'd come back because it's just a really nice woodland and I'm sure uh, we're going to find some compositions here today, uh, hope so. Later on I'll talk about what my thoughts are on uh, woodland photography and how I kind of uh, face into woodland photography. Um, so I've just walked somewhere where I've not walked before in this woodland uh, and there's a little waterfall here. I don't think it's um, Maybe it's not worth taking, maybe it is. But what I'm doing first, I'm heading up to another waterfall that I saw in a, a Gary Norman video. And um, he called it this. Now I have searched for that on maps and cannot find it uh, listed as a named waterfall. I've also did some research uh, online and uh, I find quite a few pictures but the pictures were kind of, it's a waterfall near Snake Woodland. So I'm not sure what this waterfall is called. So when we get there and we see the images, um, if you can pop in the comments, if you can tell me what the waterfall is called, then I can, I can label it right. So uh, we're going to make our way up to that waterfall, to where I think it is. And I believe it's uh, somewhere up here hope so because it's a bit of a walk and I believe it's on the river Ashop um, but we'll see so we'll make our way to the waterfall first then we'll come back into this uh, gorgeous woodland and uh, find some compositions here just walked um, so far up the river Ashop and uh, it's a bit of a scramble. I got to one point where you'd got to cross the river to carry on. So there must be another route up. I was going to send the drone up on reconnaissance but it started, uh, it started raining. Well it's more mizzle and, and drizzle let's call it. Uh, so I'm not going to go and try and find that waterfall today. I have found another one that's quite interesting. I'll show you that, but it's uh, it's not a fantastic composition. So I've walked back to this waterfall that's coming down from the hillside, and I was down there at the river at first, but I couldn't separate the uh, trees from the sky. They're separated now, but they're very much blending with the landscape. So I'm going to have to be careful how I process this to make it uh, look half decent. With the right sky and the right light, this would make a very, very nice uh, waterfall shot. So let me uh, get the camera out and build a composition. OK, I've took the shot. Um, I suspect it will be better black and white. This is at uh, 70 mil on the 24 to 70 lens. Uh, F11, 1 30th of a second ISO 500, so the light's not great, but yeah, I think this is a black and white shot. I'm tempted to go in a bit closer with my uh, 70 to 200, so I think I'll do that next. With the uh, 70 to 200 lens uh, set at 100mm, that's really framed that uh, much better, made a much tighter shot. And it's finally stopped raining and there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of light coming through over there I think I've... now this has not been an easy walk not just because of all the equipment I'm carrying but uh, it's very slippy it's very rocky particularly if you walk uh, down by the river so before the rain arrived that path was quite passable it was slippy in places 
but once that layer of rain started falling on the grass and the rocks it really made that surface slippy and as well as that um, the other reason for turning back was this walk up the river Ashop was quite nice um, and I thought there was more potential here to get some compositions around. I didn't want to get distracted um, away from getting back to the woodland so I'm going to go back here at a later date when the conditions are better certainly when the weather's better and, and it's not so slippy and I won't take the riverside path going up um, there is another path further up so where I took the waterfall uh, shot from that's another path that runs parallel with the actual river so I will take that path next time which I think will lead me up to the waterfall and then I'll come back down the side of the river and get some of the compositions that I saw on the way up and I think it does look um, like a quite a I wouldn't say it's going to be an easy walk it's going to be a challenging walk but in dry conditions it'll be a lot better and I think there's a, a number of compositions up there worth exploring there's some nice trees so this one this tree here has got lots of character and I'm sure that can be brought into a composition so my heart was for getting back into the woodland so uh, let's rejoin the video where um, I have a quick chat about handbrakes <music> I've just got my car back uh, from the garage it had gone in for repairs and uh, whilst it was in the garage I had a hire car and I went to pick the hire car up uh, as you do stood there with a the young lady she'd got a Kindle checking everything off telling me of all the things I'd not got to do to it bring it back in good condition quite right and uh, I said to her, oh, thank you very much. I'll, uh, after I'd signed my life away, thank you very much. I'll just sit in it for a few minutes and uh, familiarize myself with the controls. And uh, so I sat in and I've got a Nissan Juke uh, 2018 plate. And this was a 2021 plate. So uh, it was considerably more modern. And when, uh, so I found the stop start button and turned the engine on and it lit up like an aeroplane. Let's just watch this bit. It literally lit up like an aeroplane. And I thought, I only want to drive it. I don't want to fly it. So I checked where the basics were. Um, indicators, windscreen wipers and things like that. I thought, okay, we'll move off. We'll get used to it. So it looks for the uh, looks for the handbrake, and there was no handbrake. And it's like, okay, it's not. I wonder if it's on the right. No, it's not on the right. On the left with two buttons. Uh, one with P on, and one with hold. Hold what? So uh, I thought I don't really want to go back into the office and uh, appear stupid. Um, so, got my phone out, searched YouTube, and uh, found this brilliant two-minute video, which I explained fully how to use uh, these buttons. And I was able to release the handbrake and drive away. And uh, that just shows you the power of YouTube. Because the answers there, all the answers, you, you, can't, you can't get that on the BBC. You you can't get that on the ITV. So yeah, the power of YouTube. And I don't like this button handbrake. It's just not the same. I like to pull the handbrake on and feel like the car's not going to move. So I didn't really trust it. Uh, 
one day I'm probably going to have to embrace a button handbrake but for now this morning I've got my car back and I've got my handbrake back okay so whilst I'm getting myself bedded into this woodland I did say I was going to talk about woodland photography and I suppose when I watch videos of other people doing woodland photography they uh, say uh, they find it hard um, they're out of the depth they can't see the wood for the trees and they, they say all these things at the beginning of the video and I think that that can put yourself in a negative spiral in, into negative thinking so I'm not saying I'm brilliant at woodland I think I'm bordering on okay but I think if you go in with negative thoughts you're just not going to get any images and my first thought of entering a woodland is to lower your expectations first because if somebody said to you would you like to go on a trip to the Niagara Falls or to woodland you'd go Niagara Falls because you know you're going to get an epic shot now you can get epic shots in woodland uh, some of that is luck but some of that is really studying the woodland itself and probably spending more time with it I think in open landscape it's easier to see compositions compositions shout out at you in woodland I think you have to spend a bit more time dissecting the environment and just picking out what looks interesting and then trying to bring that into a composition so that's my approach for woodland um, expectations low but take your time and just have a good look at what's in front of you so let's go and find uh, crikey let's go and find a composition <laughs> into the woodland now and I've not seen uh, a shot to take yet I've seen lots of potential uh, nothing to get my camera out I suppose the question is am I being too fussy it's raining again okay I've got a composition that I'm finally happy with when I say happy remember we have to lower our expectations uh, but I am happy with this shot it has got a composition to it and uh, let me show you it so we've got these rocks and these are in the base of the composition and then behind we've got uh, obviously we've got vertical pine trees and they extend back and then on the left hand side we've got this uh, this tree and I like it I've underexposed it I like it but it is it is a lower your expectation shot but it is a representation of this woodland so let's uh, let's go back and uh, see if we do might do a vertical shot as well but uh, that's what it's looking like on the back of the camera and as I said I've underexposed it because then I can uh, process it as I want to I might crop out at the top there we've got some sky showing I might crop that out a little but I think when this is processed it's gonna look very nice okay I've come to a part of the uh, woodland that I've not been to before now to explore it and uh, all I can say is it's very rustic it's very messy it's very wet it's very muddy but uh, I'm gonna find one more composition before we close the video 
as I've been walking through this woodland, there's been lots of trees that have obviously fallen over. And just look at this one here. It's kind of sitting uh, on the ledge of the rocks. And I was going to take a shot of this waterfall. Um, I don't fancy that tree kind of falling on me. And it just looks, well, there's all water running down either side of it. And you can just imagine it uh, giving way any moment. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to move away from here. There's lots of potential here. There's lots of potential uh, to get flattened by a falling tree because obviously at some stage all these trees behind me there were uh, upright and have gradually fell down naturally one by one. These haven't been felled, these have come down. Anyway, oh, let's get that last composition before it rains again. Well I was just filming the last uh, composition for this video and we got some light there was a burst of sunlight and uh, it gave us this shot I didn't film it but on the back of the camera it uh, it's looking quite nice okay I just wanted to um, spend some time talking through three images that I took on this shoot and we'll go back to the uh, the waterfall one um, which at first glance I didn't think much of this uh, until I got it framed up with the 70 to 200 lens and I think it was 105 mil and that really framed everything proportionately nice we've got two trees at the top of the image there one on the left one on the right and then we've got the waterfall passing centrally down the image um, I think autumn would be a better time for this shot or some nice mist in the background the rain that was falling was making the background a little bit misty but that shot I think uh, worked for me didn't in black and white it only worked in color we talk about chaos in the woodland and this next shot is is true chaos but I felt looking at this image there was kind of an organization within that chaos and we've got some nice diagonal lines that the fallen trees are forming so you've got a diagonal line coming in from the right there you've got one coming up from the bottom kind of middle and you've got two more coming up from the left hand corner and it just gives the it just fits nicely into the image and then sort of in the upper part the upper middle we've got some light there in the in the back of the woodland and uh, i just like the chaos in that woodland is chaos and i think that captures nicely um, a piece of woodland chaos okay so this last image that we'll talk through um, I love this this was so lucky because all morning we'd have cloud and rain and rain and rain and then for 10 seconds the Sun broke through and cast this light this magical light on this forest it really brought it to life uh, and if we look on the right hand side there, the, the large tree, that's bathed in that sunlight. And then if we move our eyes to the left, we've got another uh, shaft of light catching on another tree uh, in the background. And that just makes the image, that little piece of light in the background on the left, really makes the image. Uh, and I love that. One thing I don't like about it. It's the bottom right hand cor corner there's a lot of dead space there and not a lot can do I can't really crop that out because the angle of the woodland floor is, is too acute to apply a crop to this but uh, very lucky here and the spooky thing with this image is that when I last came to this woodland to shoot the focus stacking video I came to this part and a similar thing happened so I got this shot here with the similar sunlight which was really spooky how uh, lucky was that so from this shoot they were my um, three favorite images okay so we'll end the video on a quick slideshow of uh, all the images that I took uh, maybe one or two that don't work and I will put up which ones I didn't think worked and uh, so thank you for watching the video I really appreciate it Appreciate it if you're also a subscriber to the channel. If you are new to the channel, then consider popping a subscription on. They are free. Give the video a like. Share the video. 
if uh, you might think somebody else is interested in this content. And uh, I'll see you later on the next video.